Alright, in the last video, we want to prove that uh, square root 2 is irrational. Okay, so we proceed by proving this theorem by contradiction. So we assume that it is rational, and then we know that it's, if it's rational, then we can write it in this form. And we assume that A and B uh, share no common factors, because otherwise we can uh, uh, divide them both by the common factor, so we, we assume that it is written in, in a normalized way. Okay, From that, we do some derivation and we get that A must be an even number and also B must be an even number. Okay, So and we stopped last time to let you think about uh, the contradiction that we get. So if, if you haven't think about it, just stop this video and th think a little bit more. Okay, Alright, so let's see. Now, um we we have this so let me conclude again we have that a is an v even number and we b is an even number okay and since both are even numbers they share two as a common factor okay now if you recall that previously we assumed that they share no common factors and and we can do this because we can pick a pair a and b that we want and the is one pair for which they share no common factors. All right, so um, so this is a contradiction, okay? Because we we know that they share no common factors, but from that, if the theorem is false, then they actually share a common factors. So um, so this contradict the fact that we choose a pair that share no common factors. So therefore square root 2 must be irrational okay so um, this is the proof okay it looks pretty weird because we do not directly prove the theorem we we assume the con we assume the, the the negation of the theorem and then we show that that's impossible by showing that that leads to a contradiction so this is how proof by contradiction goes and you see more example of it and you practice more about it okay all right so let's move on to the next proof techniques so this is called proof by cases okay so it is pretty close to uh, proof by exhaustion because um, you know if you if you look at our possible case in our possible ways it's exactly proof by exhaustion but uh, but uh, in many cases we not need to look at all the possible ways we just try to group the possibilities into cases and 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 if you look at all the cases then we should be fine okay so in this kind of proof uh you see there might be many possible cases but and 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 we don't really need to know which case we are in right uh, but if you if you can show that uh the statement is true in every case then we prove the the statement okay so let's see the example Right. So let's get back to the socks example. Uh, last time we we looked at the case when we have uh, two pair of socks, right? So now let's have more. So if we have three pairs, okay. How many do we get now? All right. So if we have three pairs of socks, then uh, if we try to prove by exhaustion like last time, um, we have to consider fifteen cases, and that's pretty tedious and um, and if you think about this if I add one more pair um, I would get more and more cases and that's pretty hard to deal with all right so now um, we prove it without by not uh, doing all the complete exhaustion okay we'll see okay so um, so let's 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 split the process of picking four socks okay so you pick four socks I want to prove that if pick four socks, uh, I I have at least one pair of the same color. Okay, so instead of just uh, from six six socks that I have, uh, instead of just pick four at the same time, I would uh, split the process a little bit so that it's easier to analyze. So instead of picking four at the same time, I I'll, I'll pick three. Okay, and that's that's the first step, and then uh, I'll pick the last one, the last sock. Okay, and and that's I'll, I'll use this procedure to analyze and and to prove this statement that in the end I will have at least one pair of the same color. Okay. All right. So um, 
so if I pick the first three socks okay um, there are two possible cases okay either I have a pair of socks with the same color after just picking the first three okay or I do not have such a pair okay so this this are the only two possible cases because if I don't have the first case then I should have the second right because it's the negation of the first case okay so let's look at each case separately okay so case one I have a pair of socks with the same color so I pick uh, three socks and I have a pair of socks with the same color now uh, this is the what the the theorem promise right so that's the 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 final result of the theorem so this is so in this this case by just picking the first three socks I I get that the theorem is true okay now let's look at an, the next case if I do not have a pair of socks with the same color can I say anything about it so I'll I'll pause this I'll stop this video so that so that you can think about um, the proof uh, yourself and then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the complete proof in the next clip see you